Today we're going to modify some gym equipment to be used in ways the manufacturer did not intend. Turns out, that's just as good an excuse to buy new tools as any other project in the shop. Slash gym. Slash shop. That's normal, right? Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, today we're over in the strength training portion of my shop slash gym, and specifically we're going to be doing some work on the squat rack. This is a Rogue HR2 half rack, and today I want to put a 300 pound weight stack cable pull down system into this rack. Now Rogue sells a system under the Slinger name that has 300 pounds of weights and all the pulleys and all the hardware to attach it into any of their power racks, except this isn't a full size power rack, so it doesn't fit and it isn't supported in this application. Still, since this is also a machine shop, I think we can make it work. There are two issues that prevent the system from working in this rack. The first is the rear uprights. Normally the rear uprights on this rack are only about six feet high. I've already replaced the uprights in this rack with full height uprights. I just contacted Rogue, bought another set of front posts that are identical, bolted those into the back, and now we have the full height to work with. I did that originally to get more weight plate storage, but it's gonna be really useful now because it's gonna provide room for the Slinger weight stack system. Now the other issue is that the weight stack system bolts into the three inch square tubing cross members that are on all of the other power racks. This rack doesn't have those three inch tubing cross members and Rogue doesn't sell them for this rack. However, there is a company called Black Widow Training Gear that does make a set of proper three inch square tubing cross members in the 17 inch length for this rack and I picked up a couple. And with some simple modifications, I think they will work to mount the weight stack system in this rack. This is the cross member from Black Widow Training Gear, and you can see it comes powder coated with holes already in it for mounting standard rack accessories, but the holes are not quite exactly where I need them in order to squeeze this in. So I'm gonna set it up here on a couple of one, two, three blocks with an end stop, which is just a strap clamp on top of a two, four, six block. And this way I can put pressure on the ends for drilling and it's not gonna tip in the vise, and I can put it back in here repeatedly with exactly the same coordinates. Now we'll find the center of this by edge finding on the front and the back and using the half function of the DRO and then touch off on the end here to find our zero coordinate. And then from there, it's just a matter of drilling some holes. And to drill the holes, I'm gonna use annular cutters. These are sometimes also called slugger bits or uh, hollow core cutters. And it's just a high speed steel cutter with a spring loaded plunger in the middle to eject the core that's left over after drilling. I picked up an arbor for the R8 spindle in this mill that holds these cutters and to my surprise it actually has a spring-loaded plunger inside it for the ejector pin. So I'll go ahead and put this together and put in the ejector pin and insert it in here. It's just held with a couple of set screws on Weldon flats and let's make some holes. Use a little bit of cutting oil here and we're running this nice and slow. Just apply pressure and let it cut. These bits do a beautiful job on thin metal as long as you can hold it securely because they don't grab and try to screw their way through like a normal drill can. And once you uh, push it all the way through, the ejector pin generally pushes out the slug that's left over. You can probably hear it here. And there it goes. It just ejected the slug down inside the tube. Now we'll just flip it over and make the same holes on the other side. These side holes that go through the side of the cross member are only needed for the top of the cross member because that's where the pulley system is going to mount. Now that we've got the mounting holes in the sides of this thing, we can turn it vertically and cut the holes we need in the top. There's just a bolt hole at the front and at the back to hold the uh, plates onto it, and then a larger hole in the center for the cable to pass through. I'm really liking how this annular cutter is going through. I'll just flip it over and make the same holes in the bottom. Now for the cable hole, we're gonna use a larger cutter. I think these are around an inch, maybe an inch and a 16th on the Rogue cross members, but the annular cutter that I have here is an inch and a quarter, so we'll just go ahead and use it. It's just a clearance hole for the cable to go through, so it's no big deal. 
We'll run this just a little bit slower because it is a larger diameter. A little cutting oil and give it some feed. In the larger size holes, these things really excel. They're great for coring out solid material, but they are especially good for thin wall material. These tubes, I believe, are 11 gauge, so it's about 120 thou thick, around three millimeters, and they make short work of it and leave a very clean hole. Wipe some of the oil off here. The uh, matte powder coat kind of picks it up. And then, of course, the uh, slugs are still inside. Shake those out. Wipe this down and uh, drill just the vertical holes in the other piece, and we should be ready to go back over to the rack. But before we do that, we need to do something about the top and bottom mounting plates that came in the Rogue kit. Now, there are two steel plates, a thick one and a thin one, and then a black plastic, probably Delrin plate that I have sandwiched in the middle here. And these are long because they were designed to go into a 24 inch or wider rack space. I've only got 17 inches, so I need to take a few inches off. There are two mounting holes close together here, and I am just gonna slice right through these with the bandsaw right between those holes. Now, these were a little bit warped as they came from Rogue, so when I squeezed them in the vise here in the saw, it released the clamp I had clamped on the end. I'll just retighten that, and we'll just power up the saw and slice our way through. Now, this is not a fast process. This saw cuts through material like this beautifully if you give it time, but you have to give it time. This entire cut took, I think, about five minutes. But, you know, I just sat back, took a sip of my coffee, and watched it go. If I'd been doing something else in the shop, I would have gone and worked on that while the saw did its thing. Now the cut directly off the saw is pretty smooth and in a pinch it would work, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the edges here. We'll just rock the file here and kind of round them over a little bit uh, just to take the burrs off and create a surface that if you do manage to get your fingers into where this is located and touch it, it won't be sharp. But I'm not looking to put a full radius on it. Just anything that smooths over the corner is going to be just fine. Flip it around here and do the other side. And I elected to just go ahead and leave these stacked together and do them all at once. Though I will have to break them apart to get at some of the inside edges that aren't exposed when they're clamped together. And as long as we've got the vise here, we might as well do some assembly so we don't have to do this on the machine. This is the bottom mounting plate with the holes for the guide rods, and it just bolts on with the 5 8 inch hardware that came in the Rogue kit. And uh, these fit neatly in the holes that I drilled. I love these Knipex pliers wrenches for this kind of thing because you can just ratchet them right over the flats. Get those snug down, and this is ready to go. Of course, if I'm gonna have any chance at all of getting this cross member in, I am going to need to loosen the bolts. And that one wasn't too bad, but some of these are really tight and require a significant amount of effort. I guess I did a good job when I put this thing together originally. Now with those bolts loosened a little bit, we'll just slip the cross member in. I said we'll just slip the cross member in. Okay, well, maybe we'll hammer the cross member in. This is still pretty tight. Um, I had loosened the bolts to give enough room to move it around, but it's still pretty tight. I wonder if I've got something else still hanging this up. We'll try loosening these again, and I never loosened the ones here on the bottom. We'll get those opened up and give it another tap, and there it is. That's what was holding it up. Okay, we'll just get the bolts in here and uh, get some nuts on those. And before we tighten anything down, I want to check and just make sure I did all the math right and these plates really are going to clear. And it looks like we do have clearance, so we can go ahead and tighten these down. Now I'm just going to tighten the bolts in the cross members, not the ones in the base, until we have the cross member in the top as well. Now you can see that the top cross member on these Rogue half racks is just a folded and welded piece of steel. It's not a tube and it doesn't have any mounting holes, which is the reason why we need to replace the top one. 
I used nylon locking nuts on the top here, so I'll get those backed out and get this cross member out of the way and bring in the one that we just finished drilling. Now, I was pretty impressed with these Black Widow training gear cross members. The, uh, they're pretty square. I've had some cases where things didn't line up perfectly on these racks, but these are nice and true. And by the way, I do hear you yelling at me that I put it in backwards, so I'll go ahead and flip this around and slide the bolts back in. And once again, these nylon lock nuts are a little bit of a pain, so I'll use some power tools and then snug them to torque by hand. Click. And now that both cross members are in, I can check the measurement and 76 inches, just as expected. Now to actually assemble the weight stack, I had to enlist a little bit of help. The way this works, these rods are captured between the top and bottom plates. So you have to put them in position and then stack up 300 pounds of plates over the rods. I did not trust my ability to slide them on here without tipping the whole thing over and uh, making a lot of noise and possibly getting injured. So I asked my wife to come out and help and she's just gonna stabilize the rods while I stack the plates. Didn't end up being as hard as I thought it would be. Once you get all that weight on there, I thought it would make it harder to control, but it actually makes it a little bit easier because it's so much more stable. And as long as you keep the weight over center, it's not a big deal. Now I'll just slide the top plate over and get some bolts through here to anchor it in position. And once these bolts are in, the plates won't go anywhere. Just need to tighten those down and we should be about ready to mount the pulleys. Click. Now the pulley system consists of two quarter inch steel plates that are sandwiched around the pulleys and the top cross member. Now it would be really handy if I could just go ahead and assemble the pulley system first and then mount it on the rack. But as you can see, I'm pretty close to the ceiling and there's not really room to do that. But as they say, clearance is clearance and it is not touching the ceiling. Before I bought this, I went through all the spec sheets and did the math and measured carefully and figured I'd have about a quarter inch clearance to the ceiling. And that's just about what I've got. But it does mean that it's a lot harder to assemble this than it would have been otherwise. I've got the cable fished through and now I'm fishing the pulleys in. I'll get the cross pins through the pulleys. And then there's a whole series of little Delrin spacers with screws through them that capture the cable and that maintain the spacing between the plates. And if I could just reach in from the top, I'd just slide those in, put the screws in place, and we would be in business. But I can't reach in from the top, so this was quite an ordeal, fishing them in and kind of pushing them around and trying to get the screws lined up. And I eventually got them all in, but it was not pretty. Now that they're all in, I can just tighten down the nuts on those screws and I can tighten the bolts that are holding this to the cross member. And then I can attach the cable. Now the cable just pulls down and screws into the top of the post and then there's a little lock nut to secure it. And that is it. Put in the selector pin and we should be in business. Now there is one other issue I need to check. I wasn't sure this was going to be a problem until after it was assembled, but sure enough, plates on the storage pins will interfere with the weight stack. Fortunately, I have a 3D printer, so I just printed up some rings with a nice big chamfer on the inside to clear the weld fillet. Those go right up against the frame there and the plates will ride against those and it will keep them spaced just enough off the weight stack to avoid interfering without losing much storage capacity on the pins. That is going to work. Well, I've got the cable connected and I got a tricep press down rope, so let's give it a try. Let's put the pin in at 70 pounds and That's nice. Well, that works great, and this is gonna be a great addition to the gym. It was a little bit of a risk uh, because it's not really supposed to fit this rack, but with those cross members from Black Widow training gear, the extended uprights, and a little bit of drilling, it fits and works great. I was a little bit worried because it is a little bit of a cash outlay. Uh, 300 pounds of cast iron is not cheap, especially when it says Rogue on the side, but 
it all worked out and I'm really happy with this. I will make the drawing with the uh, bolt hole locations available. I'll, there'll be a link in the description down below the video. So I'll have that available if you wanna do something like this on your rack. Well, that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.